Three, two, one. Welcome to Antimatters. Hello all, Myrmical Rubric Care Guide again today, but more compressed and without the loud background music like my previous attempt. This video will cover the basics of appearance, diet, behaviour and requirements to found. Appearance-wise, Myrmica rubra are a beautiful light red to mahogany red and brown. Their gasters are usually the darkest part of them. The queens will have brown heads and thorax. They may also have a lighter tip to their gaster. Size-wise, workers come in at 4 to 5 millimetres, and the macro gynes, or larger queens, come in at 6 millimetres. Unusually, Myrmica rubra have polymorphic queens, which come in two sizes, macro and micro gynes. The micro gynes are 4 or 5 millimetres, like the workers, but they may not always be present in your colony. They basically look like mini queens. If you can spot them, they're quite hard to find. That brings us nicely onto behaviours. They are polygamous and polydomous, meaning they can have multiple queens and nests. Surprisingly, all members except male drones in this ant can lay eggs. This is usually controlled by the queen though, but in the advanced video I'll cover this topic in more depth. These girls hibernate from October to March at 5 to 15 Celsius. They also keep overwinter brood to develop fully in spring. Room temperature is fine for them when they're not hibernating and they enjoy a high humidity setup. I'd recommend a natural setup for these girls. There is nothing better. Ryan over at Antscape has a beautiful Myrmica ruganodis natural tank if you need inspiration. He's also got a shop, antscapes.co.uk, with everything you'd ever need. If you must go synthetic, a Gen 3 gypsum nest from Wakushi can hold humidity well and would be suitable. They are very chilled and very passive. As primarily scavengers, they enjoy dead bugs, cooked meat, fish and protein jellies. Sugar wise, Honey water and everything else is great. Be sure to remove uneaten food after a few days. I'd replace sugars weekly to prevent fermentation as well. In a natural, in a natural setup, a cleanup crew of woodlice, springtails and predatory mites are remarkably effective. If you buy predatory mites from antscapes.co.uk, they come with some springtails too, which I'd 100% recommend. Let's get on to founding though. Rubras can be difficult to found if, if their claustral space is too big. A tube with maybe two centimetres of space is excellent. They are semi-claustral, meaning they require sugar and protein during founding. Honey on cotton wool and dead fruit flies, or chopped mealworms, are a great choice. I'd recommend feeding them every week. I'd not recommend using an outworld at the stage when it is just the queen, as she can reject the nest and wander the outworld trying to escape till she dies of ex exhaustion. Your best option for starting a colony, by far, is to buy one with workers or find a splinter colony in spring. East facing areas near water are a good area to look. Flip warm stones in the morning sun and you'll likely find some if they live nearby. After around 10 workers, I'd move them into a natural setup, but a lot more workers if you want to move them into a synthetic setup. The bonus of a natural setup is they can dig their own tunnels to the exact size that they want. They're the best ant in the world and are my favourite. I'll make an advanced guide with more non-important but interesting things to factor soon. I hope this is clearer than the original and helps people though. Don't be afraid to reach out on Instagram or Discord if you need help or if you're answering trouble. 
both are antimatters, maybe with some numbers. Or you can get a hold of me below in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a fab week. I'll see you next time and bye.